And now to our final new member of the Hall of Fame. Ironically, for a man of such very impeccable character, and he is indeed, they called him Killer. This, of course, for his awesome and terrorizing effect on American League pitchers. His name is Harmon Killebrew. <laughs> Though bigger men have played this game, few have ever exhibited such awesome power. He left a trail of broken seats throughout the American League to back this up. He hit 573 home runs in a 22-year career that began with the Washington Senators in 1954. No right-handed hitter in the history of baseball had a better average number of home runs than Harmon Killebrew, save only two, Babe Ruth and Ralph Kiner. Harmon became Washington's regular third baseman in 1959, and that year tied for the American League lead in home runs with Rocky Colavito at 42. It was the first of eight times he would hit more than 40 home runs in one season, and also the first of six times he would lead the American League in home runs. In baseball's centennial year, 1969, he hit a career high of 49 home runs for the second time and drove in 140 runs to lead the major leagues in both categories. For this magnificent effort, he was awarded the American League's most valuable player award. It says on his plaque, Harmon Clayton Killebrew, Washington American League 1954-1960, Minnesota American League 1961-1974, Kansas City American League 1975. Muscular slugger with monumental home run and RBI success. His 573 home runs over 22 years rank fifth all time and second only to Ruth among American League hitters. Tied or led American League in home runs six times, belted over 40 on eight occasions, is third in home run frequency. Drove in over 100 runs nine times. American League MVP in 1969. I open by saying this was a man of character. This is indeed a man of character of whom all of us in baseball are enormously proud. And in the heart of this old Washington Senators fan, there's a little extra jump when I make this presentation. Harmon Killebrew. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner. I don't know. Uh, I was used as a cleanup hitter uh, a few times, but this is the toughest cleanup hitting I've ever done. To follow guys like Rick Farrell and Don Drysdale and Pee Wee Reese, Louis Aparicio, uh, this is a tough job. Commissioner, inductees, honored guest families, ladies and gentlemen, and friends, and I do mean friends, because if you weren't a friend of baseball, you wouldn't be out there today, and we're very thankful that, that you could join us. Thank you very much. I was born and raised in a little town in all, Idaho called Payette, and when I was eight years old, my father gave me uh, my first baseball glove. He was a great athlete. He played football and 
for James Milliken University in Illinois. And then he played at West Virginia Wesleyan under the great Greasy Neal, who not only was a great football coach for the Philadelphia Eagles, but also played baseball for the Cincinnati Reds. And it was through my father's insistence and persuasion, I guess, to insist that I participate in sports, not only baseball, but in football and basketball and a little track, that, that I became acquainted with, with this great American pastime. I grew up in this small town in Idaho. My father used to like to go to the movies, and I'll never forget that a lot of times on warm summer evenings like this, uh, my father would take my brother Bob and I to the movies. <clears throat> and then after the movie was over, he would race us home. He'd always win. He was a man that uh, took a great deal of pride in his children. I'll never forget, uh, we used to play a lot of ball out in the front yard. My mother would say, uh, you're, you're tearing up the grass. Harmon Clayton Kilbrew Sr. would be uh, very proud today. And uh, I wish he were here. And some, somehow I, I know he is. Believe me, I know he is. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know how these fellows uh, ahead of me kept from being too emotional because to me this is an emotional experience. There's another person that uh, I wish to thank this day that's still living in that small town in Idaho. She's 89 years old. And it's my mother, Catherine. <laughs> She encouraged me with a unique, great attitude about life. And she couldn't be here today, but I honor her in a very special way and thank her for, I really thank her for my very being. I'd also like to thank uh, my brothers, Gene and Bob, and my sister, Eula, who encouraged me uh, in my year, early formative years uh, when I was growing up. But there's a certain blonde girl from, uh, from Idaho that's here today that encouraged me about as much as anyone else. And she's still doing that. She's here today, and I'd like to introduce her, my wife, Elaine. <laughs> I'm also very proud of my, my family, and uh, many of them traveled from great distances to be here with their spouses, and I'd also like to introduce them. My son Cam, his wife Monica, and their son Todd, and Todd's a little sleepy right now, but he's, he's there. They came from Austria to be with us. My son Ken, Came from Seattle. Ken, I'm glad you're here. My daughter, Sean, her husband, Rick, came from England. <laughs> Kathy and her husband, Scott, came from Scottsdale to be with us. And the baby of the family, Aaron, will be a sophomore at Brigham Young University this fall. I'm glad they're here to enjoy this great experience. I'm thankful for the ability that my father in heaven gave me to play baseball or I wouldn't be here today. I'm thankful to be honored in such a special way by a group of individuals that do an outstanding job, the Baseball Writers of America. Thank you for honoring me.
I'm thankful to the Baseball Hall of Fame for this opportunity of being here. And it's a special treat to me to go in with this special group that's going into the Hall of Fame this year. Rick Farrell, Don Drysdale, Pee Wee Reese, Louis Aparicio. I'm delighted. I love baseball, and I consider this baseball's greatest honor. Thank you very much.